Hi there, good morning from the Himalaya Mountains. I'm on the Langtang Trek in Langtang National Park in northern Nepal near the Tibet border. Tibet is just uh, north of here. And basically at the end of the trek, I've been trekking for the past uh, six days. So I started in Kathmandu, flew into Kathmandu, and then took a long uh, all-day bus ride up to Saibubrisi, a little village that is now about a uh, two-mile uh, hike away from where I am at the moment. I want to uh, provide a little context for uh, where I am and what's going on and then I'm going to uh, give a little uh, tour of the uh, trekking lodge that I am in right now where I stayed last night. And so uh, from Cyberbreezy when I first uh, came up here about a week ago I then uh, left and started trekking up into the Himalayas into those uh, mountains you saw right there. And so I trekked for uh, four days, well, started in the uh, afternoon, so the first day was like a half day, and then two full days, and then another uh, half day, short day, to get to Kyanjin Gumpa, which is the uh, top of the uh, Langtang Trek, and right near the base of Langtang Lirung Mountain, which is the tallest mountain in this region, at uh, 7,227 meters. And so... Uh, I hiked up there, spent two days hanging out in Kyanjin Gumpa, spent a day uh, hiking around the area, and then yesterday my plan, if possible, was to hike all the way from Kyanjin Gumpa back down to Saibabrisi, where I uh, took the uh, bus upwards uh, into the uh, Himalayas here. Saibabrisi is where I will hike to today, and I will take the uh, bus from there back down to Kathmandu. I knew that it was going to be a uh, you know, tough uh, hike coming back down if I was going to try to do it in uh, just one day. Now, I had done this uh, trek once before, about six years ago, in February of 2014, and at that time I'd hiked down in uh, just two days, but I'd started a bit later on the uh, first day, and so I thought maybe if I get an early start and really jam on it, then I can get all the way back to Cyberbreezy in just one day. And partly the reason that I wanted to get all the way back down in one day is because I really wanted to have a uh, nice hotel room for uh, that night because I've been trekking for the past six days. I hadn't had a uh, shower in three days of uh, hiking around and badly needed one and I knew that after the uh, day of hiking down here I was going to be just really sweaty and grimy and really in need of a uh, shower. And so I get started on the hike early in the morning and jamming on it and uh, all day I uh, took one short lunch break and a couple of uh, short little uh, drink uh, stops just to drink some water and juice and slowly it starts to uh, dawn on me that I'm probably not going to make it all the way down one day because it is uh, starting to get uh, towards sunset and I still have a ways to go and uh, I just keep on hiking. The sun sets, it is starting to get dark-ish. I get uh, to the place And so, finally I arrive at the place where I stayed the first night when I was trekking up the mountain. And it is getting pretty close to dark at this point, but I can see that there's a bit of light left, and I pop into that place and ask them, where is the next place, uh, the next lodge, going downwards down the uh, trail? And they say about a 30 minute walk. And I can see that I have about that much uh, time left, and so I decided to go for it, because I'm hoping that the next place will be a little bit nicer than the place where I'd stayed that first night just kind of taking a chance there because that place was really basic and rustic and I'd walked past the other place, I could kind of remember it, and thought that they looked a little bit nicer, the lodges here. That is where I am now. And so I decided to uh, keep on going and start hiking and it starts off with a steep uphill and I am just exhausted. You know, I've been hiking for like nine hours straight basically at this point. But I just keep on going and uh, hike up and then it starts coming back down and I manage to get to the place where I'm now. I think it is called like Demen, um, just as it is about getting dark. And so I uh, come into the uh, little cluster of lodges here and there are like no lights on, nobody around at all. It is looking very grim and desolate and I walk up to this place here and I can see there's a, a light on in the uh, little kitchen area and so I walk up and there are two ladies in there, two young women. They kind of look at me a little bit suspiciously because, you know, it's dark out there, I'm some guy with a backpack looking all bedraggled. They are local women, they don't really speak much English. I ask them if they have a room. They do understand a little bit of English, at least one of the women does, and she says yes and so she uh, brings me back here and shows me this room here where I am now. Now there is no electricity here, there's a light bulb, but it doesn't work, I guess the uh, power is not strong enough for uh, powering the electricity, at least not in this room here, they had a light on in the uh, kitchen there. I had noticed that the dining room was locked up, there was a little lock on it, so I'm kind of concerned about, you know, what is this evening going to be like, it is 
around like six o'clock or so and uh, the evenings can be very long in the uh, Himalaya mountains, especially if you do not have other trekkers to talk with. So there's nobody else around, no other trekkers or anything. And the lodge dining room is closed there. So what am I going to do for the whole evening? Because there's no heating in uh, the trekking uh, rooms throughout the entire trek. There is never heating in the rooms. And so I'm in this cold room. There's no light. She brings in a candle and uh, lights up the uh, candle there. And you know, that helps at least. And then she says, you can come in to the kitchen area and I'll make uh, dinner for you there. And uh, I asked her for a bucket of hot water. And so that is like my main concern at this point is I need a shower, like no matter what it takes, I gotta, gotta wash off. I do not want to spend the evening feeling this sweaty and then crawling into my sleeping bag at night, just feeling all grimy and sweaty. And so she says she'll bring me a hot bucket of water. Now I'm going to show you the shower situation and uh, the toilets, and then I will, uh, try to show the kitchen over there. I'm going to go have breakfast and then I'll get going and keep hiking to Cyberbrisi and show you much more as I uh, get to Cyberbrisi, show you the uh, town there. Maybe do a bit of exploring around today because I'm planning to stay in Cyberbrisi for tonight, then uh, get back to Kathmandu probably tomorrow. So let's get out of this room here and uh, I'll show you a bit of uh, a very basic trekking lodge, a stark contrast to the five-star uh, one that I'd shown in a previous video, a really nice lodge with nice rooms and uh, a uh, bathroom that was kind of more of a proper shower. I actually got a real shower there, not a bucket shower. And so let's head out here. Here are the uh, other rooms, the uh, toilet and showers outside here. All right, here is the uh, toilet situation. There you go. Just a squat toilet, some buckets of water there. And then here is the shower. You have to keep in mind that it is freezing cold. So you have to come out here and you have a uh, bucket of water and that is it. When the water runs out, then your shower is done. And so this is it. And so you come in here and close this door. You can see it's just like an open window thing here. And so it is just, you know, after dark and getting very cold. And then here's the bucket. And you have this thing full up with uh, pretty warm water. And then a little uh, ladle thing there. Then get dried off as quick as you can and get dressed. After all that, then I felt a whole lot better at least. And then I went into the uh, little kitchen area, had dinner and hung out with the uh, ladies there. And so the woman that spoke some English seemed to be maybe like late 20s or early 30s or so. And then the other girl was maybe a teenager, quite possibly could have been her daughter, not sure. And then there was also a baby sitting in one of those little uh, things that you can kind of roll around in on the floor in there in the kitchen area. And so I go in there and have uh, dinner and it is just the uh, four of us in this tiny little area um, in the dark with just like one little light on. I look over the menu and order a chow mein. She cooks up a, a really good chow mein. I hang out there uh, in the kitchen for a little while and then uh, I'm just exhausted, come in here, just hang out in here until I get tired, which uh, doesn't take too long and finally get a, a good night's sleep. So now I'm going to uh, head out there and go get breakfast and try to show the uh, little kitchen area where I was hanging out last night and then uh, get out of here and keep on trekking down the trail to Cyberbrisi.